how deep do you like your conspiracy theories to go? This week's mystery is so fascinating that it even reached Japan's mainstream news, which is perhaps ironic considering that's also where it began. What on earth am I talking about? This week we're going to take a look at the mystery behind a particular caption that once appeared on the Japanese news and the apparently hidden meaning behind it. Let's check it out. This mystery comes to us via a news program called Hodo Station, which roughly translates to news or information station. This show first started airing in 2004 and is still on the air today, but the episode we're looking at aired on September 5th, 2014. During this episode, anchor Furutachi Ichiro read the news as usual, but viewers noticed something strange in the caption that was displayed on screen at the same time. It said, We were unable to broadcast news related to the nuclear power plant incident today because time ran out. We are terribly sorry. There's quite a bit to break down from this small caption alone. What incident are they talking about? Why are they unable to broadcast news related to it? Why has time run out? And why was the caption so strangely worded? This can be a little difficult to get across in English, but if you look closely at the caption, first you can see that the top sentence doesn't even have a full stop. The phrase, Jikan ga nakunatta kara desu, is also rather casual and would never be used in a formal news setting. And again, the final sentence doesn't end in a full stop either. Viewers immediately took to Twitter and other social media to point out this strange caption that looked like it had been written, in some people's words, by an elementary school student. The news anchors never addressed the strange caption, and if you hadn't seen it with your own two eyes, then you wouldn't have noticed anything amiss either. And on top of all of this, why would the program go to all the trouble of apologising for some news that they, in their own words, didn't have enough time to report. What on earth was going on? As it turns out, the potential truth behind this strange caption goes down a deep and fascinating conspiracy rabbit hole. First, we have to go back a week before this particular episode aired. On August 30th, the director of Hodol Station, Iwaji Masaki, was found dead in his home. At a glance, it appeared he had taken his own life, but people soon started to suspect that this wasn't the case. After all, to the outside world, he seemed perfectly fine, and he was neck deep in investigations regarding the Fukushima nuclear plant. In particular, he was looking into reports of fraudulent decontamination, and reports of a rising number of thyroid cancers in children in the area. This, of course, ties directly into the conspiracy that emerged. The nuclear plant incident mentioned in the caption was undoubtedly referring to Iwaji's investigations. Naturally, this is a sensitive subject to many people, even today, and what he was investigating was certainly a serious and concerning matter. Concerning enough, perhaps, that someone might put a hit out on him to shut him up for good. As the theory goes, Iwaji didn't take his own life. He was murdered and the scene covered up to make it look like he had done it himself. Why? So that he would stop investigating the power plant and the potentially fraudulent operations that were taking place in the area, as well as revealing the possible correlation of a rise in cancer for those still living nearby. Rumours quickly spread that before his death, Iwaji had even told a weekly magazine that, if I die, then you should assume I was killed. Did he know that he was a target and tried to get the word out before he died? Or was it all, in the end, baseless rumours? But let's take another step back. How does all of this relate to that strange news caption? Well, the first part now makes sense. The nuclear incident was talking about Iwaji's investigations. However, the next part is the part that sent chills down people's spines. The Japanese states, Jikan ga nakunatta kara desu. Read normally, this translates as, because time ran out. 
But kanji can have numerous readings, and another way you can read jikan is jima. If we take the second kanji from Iwaji's last name, and the first from his first name, these can also be read as jima. The second part of the sentence, nakonatta, has numerous meanings, but generally means something no longer exists. Something has run out. Or, in this case, something has died. If we read it as jima ga nakunatta, with jima referring to iwaji, then suddenly the sentence takes on an entirely new meaning. It's not saying that we can't report on the nuclear incident because time ran out. It's saying we can't report on it because jima, iwaji, died. Iwaji was reportedly good friends with the staff member who operated the captions for the show. So, was this a barely concealed hidden message meant to hint at the truth behind his friend's untimely death? While it's true that those in the nuclear industry have been known to clash with activists regarding Fukushima, putting out a hit to quiet a journalist is a whole different ballgame altogether. And it's important to point out that Iwaji had been reporting on this subject for years. This wasn't a secret investigation that he was building up to. It was already known, and out in the public, and had been for quite a long time. A bit late to put the genie back in the bottle, so to speak. There's also another compelling piece of evidence against this theory, and that's reports that police actually found a note in Iwaji's home that he wrote shortly before his death. As it turned out, he had a lot of personal and family problems and, it seemed, he was heavily burdened by those. Another reminder that just because someone appears fine on the outside, it doesn't always mean they're good on the inside. The room Iwaji was found in was also sealed from the inside, making it incredibly difficult, if not impossible, for someone to exit and not leave some evidence of this. Police thoroughly investigated the death and found zero evidence that anyone else was involved. And yes, this was of course considered, but every hard piece of evidence available to them all pointed to one thing. Iwaji did this himself. Furthermore, the evidence of Iwaji telling a reporter before his death that if he died, then they could assume he was killed, was traced back to, of all things, a Facebook page where someone reported that they heard this from, essentially, a friend of a friend. There was zero evidence this interview had ever taken place, and to this date, nobody has ever stepped up to say they actually held that interview with him. So then, how do we explain the strange caption? After all, that was real, and even with all this information behind us, something still doesn't fit. As a purely standalone caption that has nothing to do with Iwaji at all, it's inexplicably strange. The language is too casual, and the lack of punctuation is unbelievable for a news program. Normally, if there's a mistake in some captions, then the show will address it by pointing out the mistake and printing the correction after the fact. No such thing was ever done here. The caption was never officially addressed. Not even once. And if we assume that the caption is related to Iwaji's death, then why? Did the caption operator, or perhaps someone else on the show, truly believe that Iwaji had been targeted? Was this their way of getting people to talk about the incident, so the police would look more carefully into it? Or was it their way of expressing remorse for the loss of a journalist and friend? To this day, the real truth behind the caption, what it was supposed to mean, and who put it there, remains a mystery. There are theories, yes, and some of them go deep down the conspiracy rabbit hole. But in the end, this one still remains unsolved, and considering that nearly a decade has passed since then, it's looking likely it'll stay that way too. But what do you guys think about this one? What could the caption have really meant? Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll see you again next time.